How's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at our next NAT topic when it comes to our SD-WAN series. So basically what we're gonna do is we're going to take what we took a look at in the previous video by enabling NAT on the single site locations of VH3 and VH4 respectively so that they could have local internet breakout. What we're gonna take a look at is focusing on allowing outside access inbound. So for example, we're going to allow the INET router to telnet to router 13 and router 15 respectively. The process is actually pretty simple. So this is gonna be static PAT, so port address translation. So we're gonna be able to take a, a, an inbound packet or an inbound telnet connection. I could use SSH as well, but I found that when you're dealing with crypto and things like that, it slows everything down and I'm trying to make this kind of snappy. So we're going to use Telnet. You could use the exact same format with SSH and things like that. So that's basically what we're going to go ahead and go do. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to bring over vManage and we're going to do this again on the single sites. So single VH sites. I'm going to go here to configuration and then come down to template. I'm going to go to feature template and I'm going to extend this out a little bit organize this a little bit better. I'm going to find single site VPN zero. I'm going to go ahead and edit this. I wish there was a way you could just right click here and you know do the edit, but unfortunately that's not an option. You have to click on the three dots. Click on edit. Maybe that maybe there's an update in a newer version of code, but right now the one that I'm working with there is not currently. I'm going to click on NAT. Now NAT is already enabled, right? It's already enabled and there's already a an IPv4 address, or IPv4 route for VPN uh, one configured to point out VPN zero to give us internet access. So we don't have to do anything there. So we're, part of the work is already done. So NAT's already turned on on the gig, on the internet interface for us. What I have to come down here and do is do some up to, uh, some updates. This refresh mode, we're gonna change this to be global and to be bi-directional because we're going to allow traffic to come in and out of the interface at the same time. So keep that, keep those in mind as well. Now, I'm gonna come down here to the block ICMP. We're gonna change this to be global and we don't want to block ICMP. We want the device to be able to respond to pings in the event that someone's trying to test reachability. Now, again, use your own judgment when you're doing this. If you don't want somebody to, to be able to ping your vEdge's IP address, obviously you can turn that off. We're going to come down here, I'm sorry, block ICMP, so errors, we're going to allow it to p uh, respond to ping as well. Now, where we need to actually configure this is the port forwarding rule. So we're gonna create a new one, and the starting port range that we're going to allow, in this case here, is gonna be 23. I'm gonna come down here, Notice how this is global, this is global, and this is global. You can't adjust that. I'm gonna come in here and do 23 here as well. The protocol that I'm gonna allow to come through is gonna be TCP. I'm gonna come down here and say, okay, which specific VPN is this going to be allowed in? I'm gonna say device or global right now is gonna be VPN one. We don't really have any other VPNs yet. We'll be taking a look at that in an upcoming section or ne next set of videos. Right now we're going through NAT. So I'm gonna go ahead and in the private IP address uh, portion, I'm gonna come in here and just be device specific. So when I go to uh, push this config down to the devices, this is where that's gonna be. I'm gonna click on add, and that's going to add the entry here. Now there's this optional thing here, but no matter what I do, that doesn't check. Okay, so I'm gonna click on update. And then I'm going to notice how over here on the left-hand side, it's not ready. So it says status, negative. So I'm going to click here, edit device template, come down to this IP address, and for site three, it's gonna be 10.3.13.13, and click on update. And for v site four, this one's gonna be 10.4.15.15. I'm gonna do that, and then click on update. I'm gonna click on next, and I'm going to come over here, and we're gonna take a quick look at the config diff, just so you guys can see the difference between the before and the after what that looks like. Give that a couple seconds to pull up, and if we come down to the config diff, we find the big green area. We are turning the NAT refresh is gonna be bi-directional. We're going to not block ICMP errors. We're going to respond to ping, and we're doing a port forward of 23 to 23, 
So telnet to telnet via TCP port or the protocol is TCP. We're going to push this into VPN1 or VRF1 with the next top IP of 10.3.13.13. And the same thing would be for VEdge4. I'm going to go ahead and click on configure devices, click on the checkbox, and click on OK. Now this is going to take a couple seconds to push, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until this has been pushed. All right, the config has been pushed. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is bring over secure CRT so we can see what this looks like. So I'm also going to uh, bring this guy over just a little bit. And what I'm going to go do is in the topology, pull up secure CRT again real quick. I'm going to go and look at router 13. Or uh, sorry, not router 13, B edge 3. And if we hit the up arrow, we do a show IP route, we can see that all of our routes are in the routing table the way that they should be. We have our NAT enabled route that we took a look at in the previous video and did our failover testing with. If we do a show run VPN 0 interface GE 0 slash 0, we're going to see that we have all those commands that we just dropped in there are working right there. Now the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want to be able to grab this IP address. This is going to be important here in just a second. I'm going to come over here to the INET router, come in here, and I'm going to ping, or I'm sorry, telnet to this IP. Okay, I'm going to hit the enter key, and then it, boom, it pops right up. I'm going to type in Rob and Cisco, and voila, we're on iOS 13. So you need to also have set up your routers to allow telnet connectivity to come inbound. Now, let's be real, this looks, we uh, have to come over here and do a show. I believe the command is NAT, show IP NAT, and then uh, filter, and then enter key. It doesn't look very clean this way. We can probably come in here and do a tab, and it'll give us a little bit of a better output. So let me go ahead and scoot this over just a little bit so we can see what's all happening here real quick. So we come down, we can see our telnet session coming through right here. We know it's working the way that we need it to. And that works out pretty well. This actually makes it pretty easy to um, break down what's going on. And uh, I needed to throw a quick shout out to, I believe the user's name on the YouTube channel is The Dark Knight. So shout out to you for, I don't know who you are, honestly, but uh, shout out to you for the couple of the, the small um, output commands that he's, he's offered up. So he's the person that's giving me some of these options here. So, so shout out to you, dude. So that's how that would come into play. Now let's also take a look at it from vManage. We come over here to monitor and to network and we look at vEdge3 and we come down to real time. I want to come in here and look at NAT and then filters. I don't want to filter anything. And you'll see that there is a TCP connection right here coming through and basically it gives us the same output as we see in the CLI. But that's basically what we're seeing, right? So we can see that this connection right here is good to go and we are happy campers. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically how you do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. I'm going to go back to INET1, or INET exit out, and I'm going to go over to VEdge4 and log into him real quick. Show run VPN0 interface GE0 slash zero. I'm gonna grab, same config here, I'm gonna grab this IP, 192.14.2. Go back over to INET, Telnet to this IP right here. Lambo, same thing happens. We are able to log in and we're in good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out. Now the question is, do I still have internet connectivity? Well, the answer will be yes. I ping 1.2.3.4. I, I can connect to that. I do a trace route to 1.2.3.4 numerically. I do ride out to the internet, which is what I want to do. And if I was to telnet to 1.2.3.4, go to Rob and Cisco. I might have typed in Cisco wrong. Rob and Cisco, boom. Um, who? It tells me who's, who I'm, I'm connected as. So internet is working and so is um, external NAS. So port address translation is working as expected. So pretty straightforward lab, right? Not very difficult at all. So there you have it, folks. That is how you do port address translation on a VEdge. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.